بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما دير مسجد الله and welcome back to another episode of بداية الهداية the beginning of guidance Imam Al Ghazali رحمة الله عليه it is a continuity إن شاء الله of the senses that is the second portion of the book when we talked about stay away from the active disobedience in the beginning we talked about the foundation of this halqa of this lecture we talked about the senses we talked about the seven parts your eyes your ears your mouth your hands your feet your button your stomach and your farj, your private parts. Among the seven, we're going to talk about the one today. And we said that Imam al-Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, that these are gifts from Allah. And if he uses the gifts from Allah against him, it says, غَيَةُ الْكُفْرِ Meaning that the pinnacle of that disbelief, juh meaning ni'mah, that you don't actually appreciate the ni'mah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi So we talked about the hypocrisy aspect of it, about you being when you're alone about with Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi And I talked about the seven in general. Today we're going to talk about one specific at a time. And today we're going to talk about al ain the eyes, the etiquettes and matters of the eye, how to protect it, and what is the consequences if you don't, and what is the word if you do. So let us, inshallah, with no further ado, to venture and dive into this beautiful uh, episode about the ain May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our eyes from sinning and make it purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi I mean, Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi gives us gifts. And how we appreciate it or don't appreciate it, Allah will give you more or take it away from you. But I used to do this because right now we're away. Uh, just bear with me. Could you imagine, my brothers and sisters, if I can ask you to close your eyes? Maybe close your eyes for a few seconds. Just imagine, just listen to me without even uh, just watching. Could you imagine if this is the rest of your life, you'll be listening to people through your ears. You will not be able to see. You don't know if it's day or night. You don't know if it's black and white. You don't know if you can't differentiate between the heavens and the earth. You kind of say, you, you know that you heard the nasheed of Ibn Sharas al-Ifasi, rahmatullah alayhi. He said that, Ya ummi ma shaklu sama wa ma al-diyaa wa ma al-qamar bi jamaliha tatahaddathun wa la ara minha athar. Hal hadhihi al-dunya dhalamun fi dhalam al-mundathir. Oh my mother, you talk about the heavens and the earth, you talk about the moon, you talk about the beauty of it, but I can't see any of this. Allahu alam if I'm actually coming to you or not. I'm, you know, it says here, sorry, you can't play the, the video, but I'm talking anyway, whether I'm on or not. Allah Kareem. If not, then I'll repeat it. No problems, inshallah. But if you're there, alhamdulillah. If not, then I'll repeat it, inshallah. So the idea behind it, my brothers and sisters, is if you if you don't uh, appreciate the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you the eyes, just try to think about your life without it. Can you imagine that? And now when you open your eyes again, Allah Akbar, how happy you are, how grateful you are for the ni'mah that Allah has given you. How could you be using the ni'mah of Allah that is given you that others will be going crazy without it? Eh? With you using not to displease Allah subhanahu wa jalla bila. Hal jazao lihsani ilahsan. Isn't it befitting for you being close to and grateful to this, the, the, the creator that he gave you this ni'mah with others? Now, I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, we can hear you, Shaykh. Okay, very good. But can you see me? Allahu alam. Okay, it's good that you can hear, but can you see? Uh, thank you for letting me know. If not, then I wish just you know what, just listen to me. Maybe it really is a Allah. This is a. <laughs> it's very befitting. Subhanallah. We're talking about the eyes, and you can actually you cannot see me. I've asked you to close your eyes, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala just made it. Uh, uh, it just made it something that. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, mandatory. <laughs> Allah Mustaan. Oh, I can see you too. Oh, okay, fantastic. Well, as long as you can see me, I'm happy for you. I can't see anybody with. It says it's not there, but alhamdulillah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ قُلَ التَّلْقِنِيَّ Tell them, O Muhammad, يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ That in itself is a blessing. He says, tell them, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, lower from thy gaze. He says, min, min al-tab'idiyyah. If he says, غُدُّ أَبْصَارَكُمْ would have been toast. If he says, uh, lower, lower gazes, period, not from the gaze, we would have been looking down all the time. We would have been told by the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, min furujahum, And protect your chastity because the reason that you're lower your gaze is to protect your chastity. If you don't, then that's the consequences. It's right there in there. Dalika azka lahum. Allah is telling you that is better for you. And that is exactly what we choose. What's better for us in this life and the hereafter. In Allah khabirun wa You know when Allah khabir, khabir now knows, he knows what you're hiding. He knows what you're doing. Not just Ali, he's now, yes, I know what you're doing. There's something there that you concocted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not talk about men only. He talked also about women. But he started with men because men are known to look more. I'm not, we're not saying that sisters are, don't have any uh, senses or don't have any desires or they're sexually dead. 
but it's men, unfortunately, that they let their eyes free more. I mean, sisters have a little more hayat. Yeah, so Allah starts with the one that uh, starts with it. And then he talks to women also, you same thing. Lower thy gaze, women ta- also know, not just men. Now, Allah subhanahu wa jalla ta'ala is giving us a, a, a pretense. When uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, Salat uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know about this another uh, al fajr you know the Amarani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he right away lower my gaze. He says, uh, Muslim, Afwan, the Jirayr ibn Awad, among, among the Sahaba, asked him about that. I see something right away. He says, take your eyes away from it. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, was told by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Don't follow the, uh, the eyesight with an eyesight. Don't look again and again and again, because you have the first one, it's for you, but the other one is not for you. Meaning what? You know what, Sheikh? You said the first one is for me, the second one is not for me. Here's what we do. Here's my first one. I'm not going to blink. You know what? I'm looking at this girl. Oh, Lord. 36, 24, 36. My eyes. Oh. Habibi, that's not what it means. It means that as soon as you see it, lower your gaze. That's The first one is there. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be walking into poles. You won't be able to live. So he says, the first one, okay, I understand. But the second one, what's the excuse? So he says, don't follow the one. This is Rawahu Ahmad wa Dawood wa Tirmidhi. So the hadith is sahih. And again, Allah subhanahu wa jalla fiyala is giving you something about the measuring stick. There's a man called Muhammad Abbas, among the righteous. He used to actually knock on the door of his friend. And the jariya, the, the female servant, used to actually open the door. You know what he used to do? He would close his eyes. Why did he not close his eyes? Too much nur, yani. The sister was so illuminating, white, beautiful skin. She used fair and lovely. And oh my God, yani, she has those beautiful blue eyes. And the, oh, yeah, no. He, did, he taught any sister, he would close his eyes. He trained his eyes to close when he's automatic shot of valve. You know what the sister said? Says, you know, sahibuk al-a'ma. Says, who's knocking the door? He says, your blind friend. She thought that Muhammad ibn Abbas, rahmatullahi alayhi wa radiallahu an, he used to be blind. So, Habibi, you don't have to be blind to, 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 for the sister to know that you're blind. But indeed, at least you should have to do something with what you're doing right now. And alhamdulillah, you can lower your gaze. And, and that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. Now let's go through the steps. The worst thing you can do is hasarat. Hasarat, you know what hasarat is? You will regret and remorse if you let your eyes go. If you can take a look at, oh, you know what, Sheikh? I look at the beautiful sisters. It's the creation of Allah, ya Ammi. When you know, when I look at her and I say, subhanallah, isn't that dhikr? Isn't, am I not supposed to, you know, ponder and reflect about the beautiful creation of Allah? No, you're not, Sahabibi. <laughs> because I'll tell you why. First thing, you can't get everything you look for, so you feel bad. I, oh man, I wish I had this girl. I wish I had this girl. But then hasra, you regret it, you remorse. How, how many are you doing this? So you have to, dis- ha- whims and desires, you have to control it. Number two, if you don't do that, you will fall into it. Yeah? Safir, it's like you're an ambassador. You, you're going through something that you, don't, you, you cannot do with. You cannot do without. So why don't you do this for your, your proper channels? Get married. And that's one of the solutions I'm going to give you a little bit later, inshallah. You know me, man. If you're single out there, I'm, I'm after you. You know what? If you're single, raise your hand. Anybody single? <laughs> go to website. Go to matchupmuslims.com. Yeah, I'll hook you up, inshallah. Very good. And number three, this is another muharramat. And if you don't do anything else, well, guess what? There's a chemical reaction inside of you. You will now feel that I want to do something about it. But guess what? You're going to have to look at the bad things or you go to bad sites and everything else that doesn't. Says Allah, remember, this is something as Al Juraj, Al Abid, he used to be a, a righteous servant, but he, he did not answer his mother when he was doing a, a, a prayer. I'm not going to go there, it's a fiqh issue now, so I'm just going to tell you that he made a dua against him. She made a dua. You know what she did? This is Mutafan Ali, agreed upon. So Allah, don't let him die unless he looks at those. Yeah, Yani uh, ladies of the night <laughs> trying to keep this a family show, okay? <laughs> and he did among the he knew it right away there was his dua of his mother. Number four, and another ila sahm masmoom. So you understand that shaitan uses this, it's like an arrow. It's a poison arrow, man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lower your gaze, shaitan. No, no, no. Look, look, look. So which one are you gonna be? Sleeve of Rahman or sleeve of Shaitan Habibi? It says again, Ibn Mas'ud Rahmatullah alayhi radiallahu anhi says al ithm khawaz al qulub. It's just, you know what? It says, it's exactly what it is. Shaitan uses that as a, as a spear that goes into your heart, blackened. 
So it says, Shaitan will not take you to commit zina one step at a time, you know, uh, right away. He will take you there one step at a time. Look at this, do that, act accordingly, and that's how it is. So may Allah protect us all from that, inshallah. Okay, so after this, number five, it says, If, you, if you're going to keep doing this, what are you going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I didn't know. You know, Allah, you gave me beautiful eyes, but I, I didn't I didn't look in the Quran. I didn't lower my gaze. I just looked at Kip Muharramat. I, I, I lost my deen. For a, good, a woman, and Allah, Sheikh, I've, not, I've seen enough brothers coming here. They ask him, why is Islam so hard? And be, because they've seen a girl that acted, and they want to get married now. There, uh, you know, Islam doesn't tell you to go ahead and have uh, uh, intercourse with anybody that you see and you like. And the hadith is there. Prophet Muhammad sallam, a man came to him, and he says, "I like your Islam. You know, that's beautiful, but I just can't stop away from him." And says, "You know, the Sahaba were gonna, you know, deal with the man." But Prophet says, "Let me handle him." Do you, do you accept this for your wife? Do you accept this for your daughter? Do you accept this for your mother? Do you accept this for your auntie? Do you, and all that. Of not, I can't accept it. Because all of us, we don't accept anybody else. Do that with any of our women. So he understood. So now, now let's go talk on the fawaid. Now let's go on the benefits. First of all, nur. The first nur you will get is the nur al-qulub, waladdatul iman. So the scholars will tell you that بعد السلف, among the, the righteous of the predecessors, says if you lower your gaze if you lower your gaze Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a beautiful feeling when you lower your gaze Wallahi, he tried brothers you have this automatic shut off valve if you know what Allah will make you get, get up in the qiyam you will do salah before fajr ya amma shaykh I can't even get up for fajr man you're asking me to go for qiyam or niyam is it niyam layl or qiyam layl I hear you brother peace I love you guys but wallahi, try it and you will see Allah will reward you right away. So if you lower your gaze, Allah will give you a gift, a nur in your heart, something you will, uh, will give you like a reward. You will automatically have this automatic shell of belt. Yes, try it and you will see. طيب. Number two is sihat al-farasa. You will have some insight. You can see things that nobody else sees. Allah will give you even fatih. When you read the Quran, you can read between the lines. You can have a better tafsir. Your eyesight, the scholars will tell you, you'll be stronger. You don't have to give you glasses. You know these guys? You don't have to use them for a long time. And something else, you will you will see something that nobody else sees or a healthier eyesight. All of these are benefits of lowering your gaze. Number three, your eyes will not see the hellfire. If that's not enough for you, I don't know what is. Prophet Muhammad says, yeah. So the three types of eyes will not see the hellfire. May Allah protect us, Ya Rab. Ameen. First one is the one that actually the eyes, the tears of flood when you're all alone from that fear and conscience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta and the one that stayed up to protect the Muslims from their enemies at night. And the third one, he says those one who lowered their gaze from the act of disobedience. Number four on the benefits. says if not just protect them from hellfire, you won't see hellfire. Ya jaza'u jannah you will get rewarded by the jannah. says our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, إِدْمَنُوا لِسِتَّنَ Prophet Muhammad says, six things he guarantee for me. I guarantee you, Jinn. He says, when you speak, tell the truth. And if you if you promise, fulfill your promise. And if you're trusted, don't betray the amana. Fulfill the amana, the, the trustworthiness. And protect your chastity, lower your gaze, and hold your hand back from harming others. It says, these are the six. I, I guarantee you, Jannah. Number five is Da'wah al-Islam. You know what that means? How many sisters out there, man, when you look at him, you, you look you look down, they go, wow, who is it? why are you not looking at me? Am I not look, Am I not beautiful enough for you? Am, why, why are you doing this? Wallahi, I heard so many stories, Sheikh. One sister accepted Islam. Once, this is a true story of Hujja al-Rawi. I think it was the states. This sister was a rich woman. And he says, every, they came into an elevator with another man that one, the brother lowered his gaze right away. She said, why? Why are you not looking at me? And he says, well, you know, Islam told me one, two, three. She ended up marrying this guy. And she ended up to be rich too, Yani. Bling, bling. Man, this guy hit the jackpot, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's the fruit of you lowering your gaze. It's the perfect da'wah. People will ask you, why you don't want to look at me? So, well, Islam, you know, it's like, it's, they ask you about say. Now, how to prevent it from this first of all stay away from the, the, the bad environment bad company anything that moves your shahawat your whims and desires hold on to quran and sunnah ya shaykh number two inshallah understand not being alone when when you're uh when you're when you can't control yourself don't be in, in ikhtalat you know what uh, women and men 
he, you know, the eyes and the ears and the hair swings and the sisters showing things that shouldn't be showing. And you know what? Of course, don't, stay away from the bad mixing. Dish. Number three is the awlad. From the beginning, raise raise your children on the lowering your gaze. Say, uh, and you see something bad on the on the on the TV. Say astaghfirullah. Right away, turn the channel. Say la'natullah al or something. Don't accept it. Don't watch it you, with them. <laughs> so, wow. Number four, it's much bigger than that. The environment, the organization, the government, everything around you should change, obviously. So this is a little bigger of a change. And one of the things I always recommend is get married early, Wallahi. When you get married early, Sheikh, it's half of your deen. You know what, man? You don't have to worry about the how you know how do I look before I go to university. Uh, you know, I, I, I change this, I change that. Because once it happens, your GPA will go up. I've asked the brothers. So when I got married early, Sheikh, that, that stuff is out. I don't have to worry about this anymore. I just have to concentrate on my university work. And my GP got better. So I'm, I'm asking you, please get married earlier. If you can't, then so me, Sheikh. If you can't get married, then you fast. You know what I mean? So you have a choice. Get married or fast. You know? So go go on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, no, no, WhatsApp. Go on uh, what uh, match up Muslims, inshallah. Allah time. Okay, righteous company, as I said, Quran Quran. Read the Quran, Allah will protect you. Read the how the righteous predecessors used to do it. It says uh, this another to anything that it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you uh, you're driving. Is this a boy or a girl? Doesn't matter. <laughs> will it will it kill you if you know it's a boy or a girl? Oh my God! Look at that. I thought it was the sister Hijab Hijab. Oh, it turned out to be her hair. Yeah, I mean, if you know something is there, don't don't go there as much as you can. Yeah, Allah. I remember uh, Imam Ahmed Muhammad Rahmatullah Ali when he used to see a Kaab Imra'ah, you know, a long time ago. He, a, a woman was wearing dress properly, Shari, but the wind came and lifted the bottom of the dress. He saw her heel. I repeat, he saw her heel. And he took his thobe, covered his eyes, and he ran home and he says, Hada Asrul Fitan. Well, I should have been with her. I'm laughing because I'm, I'm actually I'm crying, not laughing. I'm crying. <laughs> he says, "This this is the time of fitna. This is the time where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says that women will be going around naked and all that stuff, holding on to your Allah. You come down, walk downtown Toronto right now, days in the summer. Allah help you. Yeah, Ilahi. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so may Allah help us, inshallah, to to get over this thing, inshallah. And, okay, and number seven on the list is mujahid nafs. You think it's gonna be easy? Listen, Habibi." I'm a man. Listen, I know. I'm a married and old guy too. You think it's easy for me to lower my gaze? Wallahi, it's a struggle, Ya Sheikh. I remember one time uh, my uh, son, uh, Rayyan, we were walking in, uh, in, in a shopping mall. I think it was in Calgary, earlier on. And, uh, and uh, you know what? I spent some time with him and went shopping. I think we were following uh, somebody. <laughs> I think my wife was ahead. We couldn't keep, keep up and, you know, go ahead. We lost her somewhere. So my, my, my son and I were going to uh, uh, in the mall, walking, and, and something, this very in-your-face type of girl, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I say, say no more. Say no, I, I know what you mean. Very good. Okay. So now I am looking at my son. My son is looking at me. See who's going to break first. I'm looking like this, and, you know, he's looking like that. And, you know, the peripheral vision It's like a wolf and the sheep, you know, who's going to. Who's gonna break? And then we watch you we're looking at each other, watching the other, and the sister passed by, and both of us going. <sighs> so I looked at him and goes, "That was tough, wasn't it?" He goes, "Yeah, <laughs> it's tough, man. You think it's easy to to stay away from looking for, stay away from a good looking girl or a girl that wants to um, voluntarily flaunt her lovely whatever? May Allah help us, Allah. Yeah, it's not easy, but Allah promise you, there's hurrain. Well, that sister is not gonna take me away from hurrain. I have my eyes in the prize, man." So if you do that, you lower your gaze, Allah will give you something halal. Yes? But if you, if you if you don't, Allah will take that away. May Allah protect you from that, inshallah. Tayyip, keep yourself busy. Yeah? Don't tell me, you know what, I'm on the, on the website all the time. Get, the, you know, social media and you see all the things. Dude, I tried to get to this uh, TikTok thingy one time. And I was going, because somebody told me that, uh, you know, watch this or whatever. So I got into, I downloaded the app with TikTok thing. And I, what the... To get to the video, that was, I was going to see, I had to see all this poo-poo. So I deleted the app, man. What? I don't need to get that to, to the video. Send me the video. I don't want to. So also get, keep yourself busy. And be be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa jalla. Allahu nadurun alayhi. Allahu muttalun alayhi. Allahu ma'i ya akhi. The sahaba used to tell the children that three times a night before they go to sleep. Allah sees you. Allah is with you. Allah supervises you. Always, ya shaykh. So it says, Allah knows what the betrayal of the eye. You know what the betrayal of the eye is? You know when you see a sister, I'm not going to give you tricks, okay? But you know what I'm talking about. 
And you think that nobody knows, right? And you look at the reflection in the glass to see the sister. Allah knows that too. Yes? If everybody else thinks that you're good and you're talking, and all of a sudden the girl turns around and you, you give her a quick look, that's a khalit al ayin Allah knows that too. If you think that nobody else saw you, Allah saw you, Ammi. So please know that. And what is even hidden more than the secrets. So these are the issues that you have to do. And know that in the sama wal basar wal fu'ada kana wa laka'an wasula. Allah will hold you accountable for it. You understand me, Shaykh? I told you last time that your eyes are camera lenses. Recording everything will be uploaded on Judgment Day. So what happens? Remember the GoPro? I gave you that before. GoPro on your forehead. Everything you see is downloaded. Now give it to me and I'll upload it on my Facebook or your Facebook and everybody else will see what you were watching. So keep that in mind, inshallah. So understand it, inshallah, that this is something that is not going to be easy, but in there. Also concentrate on the Su'a Al-Khatima. If you do this, especially when you're all alone, you may not have a good ending, ya akhi. There's no recovering from that. And, and, and remember the Hurlain. Tadakkar Hurlain. Yani, uh, sisters are going to be very happy with me at this point. But that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from a computer and they can't, they can't hit me at this point. They can't. And I know the sisters don't do that because they're the best. I'm in trouble anyway. You know what I mean? That's okay. My wife is not here. I can speak freely. What the hell? Hurlain, dude. You know what I mean? Hurlain. Yeah, if you don't know, let me tell you, my man. <laughs> If she looks in the middle of the night, it will turn into a day. If she spits in a, in a salty ocean, it will turn to a beautiful uh, uh, fresh water. That just this much at night, it will turn it. You can see through her skin. She will always be okay. Yani, I'll try. I'll try to keep it. Yani, always fresh, always clean, always young. No gravity control. <laughs> Doesn't have to work out. She can eat chocolate. <laughs> cool. Get the gist? All right, so you can say that. Which one do you want, man? Do you want this girl that goes to, uh, you know what I used to tell brothers? Sheikh, I can't take it. I said, you know what? Listen, this girl here, she goes to the bathroom. You know what I mean? She goes to the bathroom. You have to, you have to think that way because otherwise you're going to think, oh, my man. Yes? No. You have to think, no, I, I want the hurun. I don't want this. I want the marriage. I want Allah to reserve something halal for me. And that's the, that's the thing. And in the end, Sheikh, you also have to make dua. That's number 12 on the list. You have to make dua. Ya Allah, Allahumma inni ala dhikr Oh Allah, use my senses to please you. Allah, don't take that away from me. Allah, don't make it a, a, a plea for me, not against me. With that in time, my brother, inshallah, Allah will help you. And this is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Ask Allah to help you. Allah will help you. Now, I ask Allah to help me to get over this because I can't do multitask. I'm going to see if there is a question, I will answer it. If not, then Allah will say, Yaakum, inshallah, zakallah khairan. I love you too. Keep smiling, my man. Uh, okay, sorry, Sister Rebecca. Uh, Wallahi, uh, good feeling. Okay, alhamdulillah. Lowering my gaze. Exactly, my man. Wallahi, you'll feel better. Brother Amir, how you doing, dude? Okay, uh, time to load. Okay, may Allah bless you. Confidence in relation. Oh, yes, exactly, Sheikh. Lower your gaze. Indeed. Brother Amir, you're very active, mashallah. Vision here. Yes, in, indeed, yeah, Sheikh. Absolutely, mashallah. Ali. Very good comments. I love this man. No, no. Uh, yeah, Sheikh, malls are not haram. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> no, no. You're right. Uh, let, me, let me qualify that, quantify it. Malls are haram The malls are haram for other reasons, not for itself. Yes? Okay. So if you go to the malls to look at the, uh, yeah? Of course it's not. It's not allowed. Same as you go to the beach to, to swim. And, uh, fine. But you go to the beach to do something else? Uh, same. So I hope that, inshallah, uh, this is a lot more common than I expected. But okay. Let's see if I can uh, hang in there. Allah, Allah, may Allah bless you, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh won't be a problem uh, if they keep opening. <laughs> I talked about that earlier, man. You can't say the first eyesight is like this when I can't open my, I can't blink anymore. That's the first sight. No, dude. Nice try. <clears throat> Thanks for playing. Thanks for coming out. No. <laughs> man, I tell you, these guys give us a bad name, man. They, uh, do many people uh, match up Muslims? Yes, I have a lot of people do match up Muslims. But uh, inshallah, you can uh, try it. I'll do my best to help you, inshallah. With that, I thank you, my mom. Thanks to you, my doctor. Thank you. Zakum al for bringing this person to, to your home. And inshallah, we'll see you again. We'll continue with the senses. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakum al-Khayyim. Assalamu alaikum.